Having some issues with my diesel heater. Just wondering if the exhaust is supposed to be glowing red like that. Oh, that's flames. I'm glad it was out here when that happened because that could have been very bad. Wonderful. What's up everyone? Welcome to Lowered Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who's been getting involved, whether that's subscribing to my channel, leaving likes on the videos, or leaving comments and suggestions in the comment section below. All of that stuff really helps, so thank you. I do appreciate it. Also, a big thanks to everyone who purchased a heater using my affiliate link. For those of you who don't know, I purchased this heater with my own money. After I did so, Viver approached me and asked me if I wanted to work with them. I said yes, and as a result, we now have an affiliate link, which you can find in the description below. If you purchased a heater using that link, I get a small kickback and that helps me out. Also in the description below, you can find a promo code for $10 off your purchase. That is VVS10 or promo code VVPROMO, which gives you 5% off store-wide. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, check out the description. All of that information is down there. One more quick note about Viver and the affiliate link. I've had a couple of you contact me in the comment section saying that you tried to have this heater shipped to the States and you couldn't find shipping information. As I was trying to upload this video, I got an email from Viver, and I have wonderful news for those of you who are trying to purchase one of these heaters using my affiliate link outside of Canada. Turns out that I'm just an idiot and there are different affiliate links for different countries. So I will update my description so that it has all of them that I can find. Hopefully you find your country there. So. If you were looking for a heater outside of Canada and my affiliate link didn't work for you, hopefully it does now. And now it is safety warning time. Don't do anything you saw me do just because you saw me do it. I'm gonna be doing some silly experiments with this heater, trying to get it to burn waste oil. And I do realize that some of this stuff is kind of sketchy, so I recommend that you do not try to do the same thing. Follow all of your manufacturer's recommendations, whether that be the fuel they tell you to burn, the way they tell you to operate it, or the way they tell you to install it. If you do what you see me do, you could get injured, killed, or destroy your property, so just don't do it. In my last video, I drilled some holes in the burn chamber to try to get a little bit more airflow and clean up the burn. That didn't work, so then I tried doing some porting on the intake and outlet and that didn't work either. In this video, I'm going to do something that a bunch of you suggested, and that is preheating the oil. I released a short last week explaining why you should not preheat your oil with the exhaust, and a few of you told me that you have done it, and a few of you who have clearly not done it argued with me and uh, said that the results that I found were incorrect. So this video might be a bit long because I'm gonna to try to show that in a little bit of detail that I'm not just talking out my butt and what I said would happen actually does happen. So this video gonna be a little bit of a long one. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm gonna have a few goals here in installing this. First off, I want to make sure that it's not going to be overly complicated. Second of all, I want to make sure that it all still fits into the case. I'm thinking there might be a way for me to run it through the fins here and then come over and across. I'm going to pull it out and see if there is a path that I can take that makes sense. You don't want this one coming out right next to it because then your line isn't going to have a nice bend to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it through on this side. That makes more sense. So what I can do is drill a little hole here or cut a slot here. I'll probably just drill a hole there. And then I can run the fuel line in through there and then just have it loop. Part of the reason I know that this will get plenty hot is because in order to test it, I shoved it into the fins for a few seconds, pulled it out and instantly burnt my fingers on it. 
<laughs> so yeah, it doesn't take very long to uh, to get real hot. I'm excited to see if this makes any difference whatsoever. So now I need to figure out how this is going to go in the case. Because right now I could actually just put it in like this. Maybe I'll do that for testing. All right, now I need to get a short piece of fuel line that just loops from here to here. Hmm. I suppose I should put the heat sock on this though, shouldn't I? Since the exhaust is right here. Oh, it worked. All right, now we gotta push this on as far as we possibly can. I am excited. This is exciting. I don't know why this is so exciting. Error nine again. What is going on? It did that to me before. Well, I found out what was wrong. Some idiot plugged the motor in where the heat sensor goes and the heat sensor where the motor goes. So that's all sorted out. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. 138 Celsius. I can feel the fuel is hot inside that line. The number of bubbles that are going in there are a lot more than the number of bubbles that are going in the other end. So, oh, there's a big one. <laughs> we'll see if it affects the way that it runs. There are no bubbles going in here. We'll leave it here for a couple seconds. As you guys can see, there's more bubbles coming in here than are going into the other end. So that is the fuel off-gassing inside of that pipe from being heated up. It has stabilized around 172, 174. Oh, there's a giant bubble coming. That is a big bubble. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and come back and we'll see what's happening at that point. The temperature seems to have stabilized some, but as the temperature of the fuel rises, that might cause the temperature of the burn to go up and it might kind of uh, spiral out of control a little bit. For your viewing pleasure, I've decided I'm actually gonna try to attach a thermocouple to the fuel line so we can read the temperature of the fuel. You can see now there is a lot of bubbles going in there, so I would like to know what the temperature of the fuel is so we can kind of keep track of it. That should work. Wouldn't you know, I've got to replace the battery in my meter. So now what we're going to do is check to see how much the temperature of the fuel rises when the temperature of the heat exchanger rises. So we've got 75 Celsius for the fuel. That's on the outside of the fuel line, so it's definitely hotter inside. Oh, we're 202 Celsius. <laughs> She's making some heat now, folks. 204. Fuel is 80 degrees. 79. Fuel is 80 degrees Celsius, 176 Fahrenheit. All right, I need to check on that fuel line. I don't know how well that insulation's doing now. Yeah, I think it's getting a little too hot. I'm gonna shut it down and put some insulation around that fuel line. Let's shut her down. One thing that we're gonna see here too, now that I've shut it down, we're gonna see fuel continue to feed in there as it boils off. You can see the pump has stopped pumping quite a while ago and fuel is still being fed in. The fuel temperature or the temperature there is 180 Fahrenheit, 82 Celsius. You can hear it's still burning even though it shut off. 
pretty obviously and again that's because it's still feeding fuel even though the pump is shut off a long time ago all right it looks like it stopped the fuel is still at 81 celsius 178 fahrenheit but it looks like it stopped feeding as it, as the fins start to cool off it'll actually shrink and pull the fuel back so that could be another problem is that it's going to have a hard time starting you can see there's no more fuel in that line that's because all of the fuel was pulled back through as it cooled off the fuel line got hot enough that it actually melted and stuck to the fiberglass so the fiberglass did not offer enough thermal protection the heater was working fine it seemed to be anyway it was fluctuating back and forth 1 10 a.m monday january 2nd i fully expected to find a fuel line had popped off or something because yeah anyway the remote says code air e8 it's not really smoky in here so yeah I don't know what happened all right I've been babysitting this thing for almost an hour now it is 1 in the morning and it's not not doing great I it was running really 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 hot in the exhaust and I didn't want to leave it run overnight so I slowed it down when I slowed it down, it shut off, and then I got it started by putting my finger over the inlet. It backfired a whole bunch of times, and a bunch of soot blew out of it. I'll try to get my phone so we can light this up, but uh, this is all the soot that blew out of it. It's working worse, if anything. I think maybe what I need to do is take it apart and plug up those holes that I put in it because I maybe I'm mistaken but I don't think it's worked well since I've done that it's actually worked worse I guess what I should do is take it apart tomorrow plug up those holes that I drilled and then do the same test again and see if it uh, works because those holes could be causing some sort of negative effect all right folks it is the following day i did decide to shut down the heater overnight as i didn't trust it i am taking it apart to plug up those holes and this is what has built up inside of the chamber in that short amount of time so i don't think that uh preheating the fuel is doing any good but we're going to continue with the test i'm going to plug up these holes on the back i think i'm just going to use some glue to do that because uh, it's quite convenient for cleaning out the chamber. I can actually poke something through those holes and make sure there's nothing in there. After making that last change, the heater decided that it did not want to start at all. I tried eight times and completely flooded it. I didn't want to give up, so I used the heat gun in the air inlet to get it going. And, uh, well, that's what you guys are seeing here. All right, let's go. Take a look outside. <laughs> So this is the results of this test. Somebody told me to put a magnet on my fuel line to pick up the debris. And I decided to drop a magnet in a glove directly into a bucket of oil. And this is all the stuff that I got. Mind you, I just kept it in one spot. I'm gonna peel the glove off of the magnet now and we'll check out what we have here. But I didn't bother moving the glove around or sloshing it around, this just sat in place i think for two days and so stuff that was all the way on the other side of the bucket it wouldn't have picked up but kind of surprising how much stuff it actually did gather so interesting i wouldn't have thought that there would be that much metal uh, ferrous metal in the oil but i guess lawnmower crankshafts are all made out of cast iron and the liners on some engines are cast iron so some of that stuff can end up in the oil. 
If I saw it, I wouldn't think that it was metallic. I would just think that it was sludge. Time for a quick update. The heater has been running for a couple of hours now and it seems to be running okay. It's not doing anything real weird. The temperature's kind of fluctuating a little bit, but that's to be expected because of the fuel line going through the fins and the fuel being preheated, as I've talked about before. So the fuel is gonna go in at, uh, yeah, different rates depending on the temperature of the fuel in the line. So it seems to have cleaned up quite a bit as far as the uh, smoke in the exhaust. I can't show you now because it's dark outside. But also the exhaust temperature, the last time I checked it, seemed reasonable. It's not crazy, crazy hot. So I'll do my duct temperature check. 33 there, 46 there, and 60 there. Which I kind of don't like that it's up to 60, but I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is 84 at the flange. Okay, so wow, 200, 207, that is a reasonable temperature. So, as you guys can see, I decided to change a few things up. It was actually fluctuating in temperature quite a bit, and so what I did, I have a piece of copper wire tying the end of the uh, air inlet onto the hot air outlet. And that feeds in, of course, to the inlet of the... Uh, heater and that has stabilized the temperature quite a bit and it seems to clean up the uh, the burn it seems to be burning a lot more clean so you can see that's how much fuel we burnt so still not very much all right folks it is 12 minutes after 8 p.m. the temperature in here is 13.5 Celsius what is the temperature outside though a tropical minus 6 Celsius so only minus six Celsius. The heater has been running over 200 Celsius. It is currently at 208. It's been kind of hanging out around there. I came out to the garage. The uh, carbon monoxide detector is not going off. It's happily sitting on the wall over there. I don't smell a bunch of fumes. I'm guessing that a lot of my heat is just going up because of <laughs> Because of the fact that I have the fuel line going in through the inlet, I don't have the pipe on to blow the heat down. And so the heat, yeah, the heat isn't coming down and then going up or anything. It's just going up. So it's gonna take a long time to get warm in here. Anyway, let's see. We've burnt that much fuel. So it burnt that much last night before it uh, started acting up. Uh, the heater's making some really weird noises. <laughs> Is there a lightsaber fight happening in there or something? This is unexpected, quite surprising. This is all the buildup that was in there. It is right over the exit of the burn chamber, but uh, usually there's a big pile along one side. This time it's fairly central. There is some on the bottom. I'm gonna knock this stuff out of the burn chamber and then see if there's something I can do about possibly getting it to start without the baffle. I'm thinking about drilling that hole out a little bit bigger, but I don't know if I want to do that. I could always reverse it by uh, filling it in with epoxy and then re-drilling it to the original size, but I don't know if I want to mess around with that. All right, so this is pretty much all of the carbon that was in it. I have drilled the hole out to one eighth of an inch. I managed to break one drill bit and break one end mill doing it, but I got it drilled out. So 
that was two sizes up. I don't know what act the actual size of it was, but uh, hopefully this helps it start and uh, doesn't have any real negative effects. <laughs> I wasn't recording that, wonderful. <laughs> I can normally blame my camera screw ups on GoPro, but this time it was my fault. As you guys just heard in that last clip, I forgot to press record. As a result, I now have to tell you guys what I was doing. I decided to put two metal fuel lines in the heater so that I could heat the oil a little bit hotter, and I'm doing that for two reasons. The first reason being I want to see if hotter oil will actually make it work better. And the second reason is that I want to see if doing this will exaggerate the results that I think we're already seeing. That being that the oil heats up, vaporizes, pushes a whole bunch of oil in, makes it burn very hot for a short while, and then the temperature drops off as I hit a vapor pocket. So let's find it. I'm pretty sure what's going on here is that the fuel is expanding and being shot into the combustion chamber. Then it gets consumed and it's left with a big gas pocket and then it then and then it cools off. It is even more exaggerated now that I am running the fuel through two lines and it is getting heated more and therefore there is more vapors or more dead spot in the fuel feed. So it gets fed a whole bunch. Hopefully I recorded it. It shot up to like 120 or 226 rather. And then it dropped all the way down to like 150 or something. So it's being quite erratic. Now that it's on its way up, it's gonna keep climbing. And there, there's a huge pocket of air. There's another huge pocket of air. Again, the pump is still feeding at the same rate, but whatever is in the line that gets heated gets pushed in. The vapor expands and pushes the fuel in. Yeah, we'll see how high it goes before it turns around and goes the other way. As it's cooling off, the fuel will condense and it will eventually start pushing more fuel, but for a little while, it's gonna be starving a little bit, running lean. 148, the fuel is starting to condense now. There are less bubbles. 142, we're dropping. It might shut off. All right, now it's almost solid fuel. There's very little air going in and mostly fuel. seems to have stabilized at 142 and now it'll probably shoot up and go really high. Uh, seems to be turning around. To try to help it stabilize, I'm actually going to lower it down two bars and hopefully it won't overshoot and go like to 216 again. Hopefully this will let it calm down a little bit. And then as the heat starts to die down, I'll set the heat range, oh man, 202. So what? 
what's going to happen now? Oh, it shut off. The electronics failed. Uh oh. Uh, I think I fried my electronics. I'm pretty sure I let the smoke out. I think I cooked my motor is what I did. Yeah, the motor's seized. Or the fan stuck. 153 Celsius. Okay, the fan connector just fell off, but it's stuck, so I think there's more wrong than that. You guys remember a few videos back when I told you that you shouldn't plug the inlets of your heater and that you'd find out why in an upcoming video? Well, I think it's probably pretty clear to some of you already, but you'll find out for certain in the next video. I think most of you probably already know. Just in case it isn't clear, this method of heating your oil is safer than wrapping something around the exhaust and using the heat from the exhaust to do it but I am in absolutely no way recommending that you preheat your oil this way. Use the heater in the way that the manufacturer intended. Don't do what I do. For those of you who are interested in purchasing a five kilowatt heater that is similar to mine, affiliate link in the description below. If you use that link, I get a little kickback and it helps me out. Also promo code VVS10 for $10 off your purchase or VV promo for 5% off store wide. That is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Not sure exactly what I have coming next, but uh, it should be interesting. And because this video is already too long, if you guys watch to the end, you are absolute legends. It is January 21st, the day before this video will be released, and I am showing you guys what I am working on right now. Not going to say too much about it, but have yourself a look. Thanks for watching.